to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all the time, and He's worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the Living God. He loves us with a true agape love. He wants to pour it in our heart, write it in our mind, keep our heart and mind in His perfect peace. He wants us, us to come and rest in Him, come follow Him. Casting all of our cares before him, denying ourselves, picking up our cross and following him. He wants us all for himself. You, you know, as we're supposed to delight ourselves in the Lord, he delights in you today. He delights in us today. He wants you all for himself. The Lord is, he, he is and should be the strength of your life. He's the one who brings the revelation, the wisdom, the knowledge. He brings the light that he is into your life. He lights your heart and your mind. The Bible talks about that the word is in your heart and in your mouth. <laughs> that word is in your heart and it's in your mouth. This is the word of salvation that we, that we speak. You know, as I thought about how we are supposed to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, that's our mind, will, and emotions, and with all of our strength, we're to cleave to Him. This is how we're supposed to love Him. I thought how the mind and the mouth go together. And these are thoughts that are laid down before the Lord. Nothing is greater than Him. Because as a man thinks so he follows you, you think and you follow God thought of us before he created all created mankind before he made us like himself he had a thought an image of us in his mind these thoughts of ours this imagination of ours must be laid down in the word of God we must know him I mean K-N-O-W know him where your heart rests in him where you really trust him and you lean on him and you rely on him every thought it has to come into the obedience of Jesus Christ but it's we who let it by our will submitting to his will Jesus will Jesus' will went with him into the garden when he was going through that great tribulation right there of, in his flesh to lay it down. You know, he said to the Lord, to the Father of heaven and earth, if this is your will, Luke 22 and verse 42, I'd rather read it from the, from the word. It says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done and that's where we how, that's where we need to be that's how we need to be with our heart with our mind will and emotions if we really believe that God is and that he's in our lives and he's not just some somebody in the heaven watching us and watching us all fall out and die and be hurt and maimed and not even the die part <laughs> but just being tortured in our minds and our feelings God he came to take us out of judgment and to bring us into life a life where we have peace a life where we are not distraught and we're not you know, boiling over with anger and doing the wrong thing. He took us not just out of judgment, his judgment, but he took us out of this flesh and blood body and gave us a new spirit, gave us his spirit. He puts his word in our heart, writes it on our minds, wants to keep our hearts and minds in his peace. And believe me, his peace is in what he said. Well, the, the will of Jesus, he, he laid down that will as hard as it was. He was facing being beaten and tortured. 
He's, he was facing being stripped naked and mocked. He was facing having his beard yanked out and being beaten with cords with glass and nails in it, dragged across his, his flesh, his skin, tearing him apart, eyes bulging out, having his hands and his feet nailed to the cross. He knew what he was going to endure. And yet he knew he was going to save us by laying down his flesh and blood body, by not going into a mind of sin to go against God's will. He laid down his will for the Father's will. Now, if we believe that all things are possible with God, that's what we do. If we know that he works everything out together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose, we lay out this heart, this mind, will, and emotions of ours, these thoughts of ours, so that they can be crucified with Christ. He already did all the work. It's not like you've got to, to push and push to get in here. The only pushing we do is in the word of God, letting it settle in our heart, letting it be, letting that word be written on our minds. See, it's God who establishes. What does it say in First Peter? Chapter 5, verse 10. It is the Lord that brings us into maturity. He establishes, strengthens, and settles us. He settles you. It's his job to do this work in us because, see, we submitted our heart and mind to him. Our mind, will, and emotions are, are settled in Christ is alive. Christ is. God is. And he is my savior. He has delivered me from, from the grief and the sorrows that are in this life. He has healed me. He's delivered me from the strongholds of the enemy. Read Psalm 91 again. Would I actually have that open over here. It says, he, he will rescue us from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. And those are for those who live in the shelter of the Most High. They find their rest in the shadow of the Almighty, in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that God has given us who teaches us everything. <laughs> he has life for us, real life. If we would let go and stop trying to hold on with grief and sorrow. Worry is the devil's prayer and it praises him all the time. Fear is, a, is the devil's torment and he releases it to us and we receive it because we can't see the promise and the vision of God. God's plan for us is not evil. It is good. He has success. He wants to establish you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to bring you into spiritual maturity. But in, like it says in Ephesians, is it Ephesians chapter 3, is it 3 or is it 1, chapter 1, he wants to give us a spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we would have, un you know, that we would have understanding, that it would be clear to us. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, remember, but power. But he gave us his spirit of power, uh, power, love. And a clear mind, a sound mind, this is what the Spirit of God does if we would cast all the cares down. And understand this, that when we throw our cares down, we're throwing down our feelings, our flesh. We're, we're throwing down this part of us that looks, to, looks at things the way that they are seen before our eyes, our physical eyes. But God has given us his spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He's given us a spirit of understanding where we can understand that God's... Hmm. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Because you see, he's put us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's given us all these spiritual blessings, but the only way to come into the blessings of the Lord is to know him. To know him. I want to throw in there the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, and the fruit of that comes because we know Him and we understand that nothing is too hard for Him. He will work this thing out. He makes a way when you don't see a way. This is us learning how to walk by faith and not by sight, by the way. And it's trusting the Lord that he will establish you. He will bring you in mature, into maturity. As long as we keep, what did Jesus say? As long as we keep the word. He knows how to bring it together. He knows how to stitch it here and put it there and bring it out where it needs to be brought out. You don't have to worry about a thing. Be in love with God because the Lord, he loves you. This love will overflow your heart and mind and keep you in perfect peace when you understand that there is your mother and father can't compare to the living God, to the Father who created everything that is seen yet not seen and heard yet not heard. He knows it all. He sees it all. He's been there, was there, is going to be there. And he is with us. The Lord is the strength of our lives. He is the joy of our salvation. And there's no weapon formed against you that can pluck you out of his hand, that can pull you away from him. No weapon that will that can prosper against you when you understand that he's the one who created everything. The devil that torments us. The one who speaks against you. That, you know, the prince of the power of the air, he's made by God. For no weapon formed against you will prosper. We got to stop thinking the wrong way. The father's who he is. He set it up the way he set it up. And he's allowed this to be the way he's allowed it to be for the purpose of bringing you into his house. And those who really want him will fight for him. But they will fight for him fight to get out of this flesh and blood body and I mean not physically physically but to lay it down and make it obedient to Christ that's the word obedient to Christ Ephesians wasn't really where I was where I wanted to speak from but I, I will grab some of this because we need to understand that we're not fighting a fight in our flesh you know, by ourselves. That there are things outside of us that we cannot see fighting against us, keeping us in our thoughts, in our feelings, keeping us, you know, mewling over some situation, some circumstance, and we can't seem to get around it or lock our thoughts onto this thing so that we can get some progress to go forward, you know? God sees us and he knows us and he wants us to come out of this whirlwind. And this is all a part of knowing him. This is this all is a part of knowing God is also knowing what's coming against you. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit or the power of his word is the power of Christ in us. Remember, Christ died for us so that we would not enter into judgment. We're not going into the lake of fire anymore. We're going, we've been delivered from salvation. I mean, we've been delivered into a salvation that roots out the power of the enemy. Let's be wise, okay? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual, a spiritual host, host of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
It, <laughs> that's interesting. Of that. Therefore, take on, up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the truth. That's the word of God. Jesus in, chap in John chapter 17 says to the Father, keep them from evil. And the way that God keeps us from evil is that he's given us his truth. The word is truth. He's given us the spirit of truth who reminds us of all truth. We don't have to lean on our own understanding. See, what we really need is to know God. We need to trust Him. We need to really believe that God is. Not from watching movies. <laughs> Not from listening to, to the preacher talk or the, whoever is talking. Not by listening to your friends and just going about looking at the sky saying, I know God is. Know, his, know Him in His nature. Know that he truly is without faith. You know, it does say this in the Bible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to him must believe that he is. They must believe that he is. And he rewards those. See, all these, these promises of God, they come into your life. And they'll overflow you. Because you look for him. You diligently seek him. You sincerely search for him with all your heart. With all your mind and with all your strength, you want to know him. This situation and that circumstance that comes up, it has no power over the one in whom all things are possible. <laughs> his mercy endures forever. The Lord's mercy, it really does. Even when we fall down, even when we mess up, he's there wanting to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. He wants to forgive us our sins. He's not ready to throw you away. I'm grateful that he loves us. Verse 14, therefore stand, would you stand therefore girded, having your loins girded, your mind girded with the truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, right living. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right living, God's way of being and doing things. We get to know him through his word. And having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Being prepared. Having your heart and your mind prepared with the gospel of peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. That comes from him. In everything and in everything. Did I say that twice? I don't know. <laughs> but he has given you peace. By his blood, by his body, Jesus bore our grief and he carried our sorrow and in our, the pit of your stomach is peace. There is rest from God. And no matter what somebody is acting like, I'm, I'm, like I'm telling you, the Lord will give you the strength. He will give you the, the wisdom and the knowledge, the understanding to deal with this person. Because they don't know what they're being used by to come against you, to come against the family, to come against the job, to come against whatever is happening in this life. They don't know what they're listening to and who they're being tormented by. But you know how to keep the peace. You know, you know how to use this peace and, and, and to persuade people, even in your silence. Because in your silence, you're praying. You're uprooting the root of bitterness and anxiety. You're ministering peace. We're supposed to pr pr pursue peace with everybody. Even in that quietness. Above all things, verse 16, taking the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Without faith it's impossible to please God. In fact, that brings us back to 1 Peter chapter 5, right? Where, <laughs> where we are 
resisting the enemy with the word of God. We're, we're resisting him. The enemy is coming in on us like a flood. The, the situation and the circumstance is, is, is like, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know what to do. But the greater one who lives in you will teach you all things. <laughs> if we would just calm down and know him as Lord. See, he will keep you in perfect peace because you have stayed on him. You're acknowledging the Lord in all of your ways and he is bringing you into the quiet place. He's keeping you covered from the enemy so he can't brutalize you. That even though that thought comes, you can say, I don't want that. I went to sleep last night and I saw something. I saw something coming to bother me while I was sleeping. In my dream. It was about to be a dream. I was like, no, I don't, I don't want that. And it couldn't bother me. Practice it throughout the day. Desire it even before you go to bed at night. And ask the Holy Spirit to be with you when you lay your head on your pillow. See, I don't want to be off guard. When, when whatever comes knocking at the door of our heart trying to burden us and delay us and keep us from doing good. The good that the Lord gave us to do. To love others the way that they need to be loved. By God. I don't want to not do that just because they act, they did something. God is able to keep us in perfect peace because we keep on coming to him. We're bare before him, wide open in our heart, in our mouth, in our heart, before him. Every thought is bare before the living God, and he's able to keep us. We're not sitting here squint, just, you know, pulling our hair out and squinching our fish. Or, well, I said, she just said it's tightening our fist and squinching our eyes trying to figure this thing out when the answer is right here the answer is right here the answer is in him first peter chapter five casting there no no wait where is it be sober and be vigilant <laughs> should have did verse seven casting all your care upon him because he cares for you Verse 6 says he may, that, he, that God will exalt you in due time because you humble yourself before him. Here's verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast and in the faith. <laughs> faith, the word of God, in your heart. And you written on your mind. Your tongue is ready to speak because it's written in you. It's on you. It's in you. That word of God is in your heart. That word of faith is in your heart. And it's in your mind. Because you've submitted yourself to God. You have sincerely sought him. And the reward is his word. That reward that is his word. Is, it, it will go into that situation. Into that circumstance. Into this place this world and it will do exactly what God said it will do because it's his word out of your lips from your lips I like it that we're back here in, in 1 Peter chapter 5 resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to this eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect you, bring you into maturity, establish you, strengthen, and settle you. It's not you that lifts yourself up. It's Him. It's the Father. It's the Son of God that we lift high. He was lifted high on that cross so that we could live through him. He got up from the grave so that we could live through him. Now we can really have life and life more abundantly. We have an, a life, an agape life, and an everlasting life and with the eternal God. 
but this flesh must die. It must become humble before the un- almighty God, humble to the spirit of God, so that we can learn how to walk by the spirit and not fulfill the lust of our flesh. We, we had the lust of this flesh when we didn't know him. It did whatever it wanted. It had whatever attitude it had. Even if it was depression, it was an attitude, an attitude of the mind. But we take this mind and we put it in this word and we become transformed in the knowledge of God. The knowledge of the world will still be there, but I'm telling you, it's going to get dull in your hearing, dull before your eyes, because you'll no longer begin to see from the from this flesh and blood body the way you used to. You'll begin to see in the spirit, the right spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. The one who will truly teach us what we need to know about God. Don't surrender to how you feel today. Surrender to what Christ has done for us when he did that on the cross. He made it so that we didn't have to live to ourselves in this flesh any longer. We owe nobody anything but to love them. We can do it. Oh, we can do it. Christ in you, the whole book of glory. Now, I didn't finish up Ephesians. But that's fine. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't respond to this world with how we feel or what that looks like. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every into captivity to the bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know. It's not, a, it, 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 you know, it, for Paul and him, this was an outside argument. This pertained to people all around them. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God coming at them. But we, the children of God, by faith in Christ Jesus, who died and rose again, are not living the life of a submitted mind, a submitted mind to Christ. We don't know him the way these apostles knew him. The way those the way those disciples then knew him, we've been so in, inundated and branded by this world that we believe that government is our god. We believe that Google and and Facebook they, they're our helpers. They really assist us in life, but it's not true. The spirit of life is right here to help us live life. Jesus gave himself so that we would have the spirit of God to live in us and quicken us make us alive unto God this one life that we will live forever this one that will be with him or without him is an everlasting life we choose where we will have our our eternity I choose to have my eternity in the knowledge of who he is so I gladly cast my thoughts down this is an inside thing first before it becomes an outside word. I'm coming back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 10. Listen to this again. Casting down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when the obedience is fulfilled. Like Jesus said, you know, how can you help somebody else with a log in your eye when they have a splinter in theirs? You're busy trying to get around your own log, your own hurt, your own pain. You're always going about hurting, bleeding on people with, with your hurt. Your damaged self needs to come before Christ and be healed because he heals you. He has a new way of us seeing and seeing by the Spirit of God. He has a new way of us hearing and hearing by the Spirit of God because He's given us His Spirit 
And we we have a new spirit, a one that's been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. We owe this flesh nothing. We know we owe no one nothing but to love them. And we can do it because we put our heart and our mind in Christ. And now we will speak those good things. We've taken the strength of ours, we laid it in the word, and we are dependent upon the one who will bring us life and peace. I ask you, I ask you to have faith in God. Trust him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your emotions. Trust him today because he really is our life. Be encouraged. Be steadfast and immovable in the knowledge of God. He really is our life. Be blessed of God, my people. I love you. Bye-bye.